Hello again, friends, and welcome to another demonstration of Bomb Squad Academy. Previously, we had covered the introductory levels, introducing users to the basics of electronics. Now we're going to move on to logic gates, where we can do certain logical operations on currents. Let's start from the beginning. So this is our first logic gate, known as an AND gate. AND gate only lets current flow through if both inputs have current flowing in. So let's try for ourselves. So if I turn on either of these two, the buzzer will not sound. But if I do both at the same time, you can see both inputs in, got an input out. So now we're ready to get some work done. Okay, let's defuse this bomb. Let's look at the detonate pathway. We have an AND gate that is already half satisfied by this pathway connected to D. So I'm going to turn the switch off. Now by turning the switch off, even if input comes in through the other side of the AND gate, the other input, it still won't pass the signal and detonate the bomb. That's good. Because if we look at switch C, it branches off in two directions. One of these directions will be blocked by this AND gate. The other direction will pass through the AND gate because we have a signal throwing through it on the A input. So let's do that now. So that triggered disarm B. We still need to trigger disarm A. If we trace that back, this AND gate is already half satisfied. We can fully satisfy it by triggering A here. So, here we go. Let's move on to the next level. This next board has a lot of switches. Maybe you should flip them all. Okay, looking at the detonate, this switch is already off, which blocks the detonator from going off prematurely. So no matter what we do, as long as we don't touch this switch, we'll be fine. Now, disarm B, depends on an AND gate, which depends on two other AND gates. So let's work them one at a time. This AND gate depends on this pathway here and another pathway here. Both have switches with current on the other side. So I can flick this switch here and this switch here. Now this half satisfies this AND gate. Now we have to satisfy this one. So let's flip this switch. Okay, so that's the B disarm activated. Now the same thing up top for the disarm A, AND gate relying on two other AND gates. Let's activate this switch here. So we're halfway there. Now let's activate this switch here and the switch here. So very good, the bomb's been disabled. That last board was pretty straightforward. Here's a more challenging bomb. All right. Again, the detonation path. Now, this AND gate is half satisfied by this battery that is hardwired into place. There is no switch that we can flip. There is no wire that we can cut. So we have to make a priority of making sure that nothing flows through this pathway here. So let's trace it back. We're coming back to this switch here. So if we turn this switch off, no current will flow through and satisfy this AND gate and set off the bomb. Now, this pathway has a branch point that if we follow, goes to this switch here, which will go to this AND gate that is already half satisfied by the battery, which will disarm the bomb. So let's follow this back further. Here's another AND gate half satisfied. We can fully satisfy it by activating this switch here. So now we've made it all the way to here and if we flick this switch the bomb is disarmed. Yeah, we're, we're cooking along pretty well here. Let's keep going. 
I'm going to guess you need to flip some switches and cut wires here, but who knows. Alright, this is tricky because now we have wires that we could potentially cut. But let's think this through carefully. Here's our detonate path. Now, we have a series of AND gates and we have a series of branches. And some of these are dependent on each other. We need current flowing through here because we need to satisfy this AND gate to, tr to trigger disarm B. The problem is we can't fully satisfy this AND gate. So let's take a look at this and go backwards here. We have this wire here going to this pathway. We have to have current flowing through here because we have to satisfy these AND gates to satisfy A. So for the moment, I think we're safe to activate switch number three. That half satisfies this AND gate. If I flip switch number two, we're going to fully satisfy this AND gate and the signal will go up here and half satisfy this AND gate which we need to disarm the A side. So let's do that now. Okay, that's more progress. Now, like I said, if we turn this switch current will flow through this wire fully satisfy this AND gate and set off the bomb. We don't want that. But we do want current to flow through this AND gate and this AND gate and this AND gate so that we can disarm A and B. So to get what we want and not blow ourselves to kingdom come, we need to cut this wire. There we go. Okay, cross your fingers. Well done. Excellent. This board will really challenge you, I guarantee, but don't panic, you can do it. Let's find out. So we had three wires, and the question is which one? And we have to be careful, because if we cut the wrong wire, we may put ourselves in an unsolvable situation. So let's trace it through. We have this AND gate. Now this pathway, this wire here, we depend on to hit the uh, C disarm. So whatever we do, we cannot cut this wire. Which means we've got to find a way to make sure that the second half of this AND gate does not pass a signal. Now this is dependent on another AND gate. Now, again, we need current flowing through here because we need to disarm the B side. So we can't cut this wire. Now, let's trace a little, can we find a way to disable this one? If we disable this one, that would help, because we can have current still flow through this branch to get to A, but we do not want any current fully satisfying this AND gate, and this AND gate, and this AND gate. So if we're gonna cut a wire, we might want to make it this one. So let's visualize this a little more. I'm going to start by flipping this switch. And it says, you sure? We've disarmed A. That's good. Now once again, if I, f if I flip switch number one, I'm going to half satisfy this AND gate, and then also satisfy this AND gate, and this AND gate, and this AND gate, and we're blown to bits. So let's cut this wire. Okay, so if we've done this right, we will have current flowing to the C disarm. We will also have current flowing to the B disarm. So here we go. See, I told you you could do it. Okay, now we are introduced to rotary switches. They allow us to select which path the current takes. Try to turn on the display. So to turn on the display, we need to 
satisfy this AND gate. So we need current flowing through these two branches, here and here. And we also need to turn this switch to, so that we can get actual battery current flowing through here, so you rock. You do indeed. Well, I thank you. Try to get the signal across from the in port to the out port. Okay. Well, there are a couple of different ways we could do it. So let's turn this switch here. And then this switch here. Then here. And here. Awesome. The signal is getting through. Rotary switches are pretty fun. Let's see if you can figure out this maze. Okay, as usual, don't set off the detonator. So we have a rotary switch here, which is linked to this switch here. If I turn the switch here, it'll go to this wire, which means the signal will go nowhere. And that's really what we want. Now, if I want to disarm the bomb, I need to satisfy this AND which means we need something flowing through here. Now you would think it would be easy to just flip this switch, but the problem is we need to satisfy the other side of this AND, and if I just keep toggling between the two, that's not going to do us any good. What I can do is redirect the current flow through here and find an alternate path to satisfy this AND gate here. So I can set this rotary switch here and then this rotary switch here. Then when I turn this switch we'll have a clear path all the way to here and disarm the bomb. So here we go. Nicely done. Order of operations is everything. Choose your path. Okay. The detonator is going nowhere. That's good. But we still need to come up with a way to activate, disarm A and B. Alright. Let's think about this. If I turn on switch 2, we activate B. But in order to activate A, if I flip this switch, the way we don't have any other control here, so all I can do at this point is choose between triggering disarm A or disarm B, but not both at the same time, which we need. But there's something else here. There's a rotary switch that is between the battery and the power input on the detonator block. If we can interrupt the current flow, we can just turn off the entire detonator box and be good. So how do we do that? Well, let's start by turning off this switch here, and then turn this rotary switch here. That should cut the power. Congrats! You chose wisely. Well, thank you. All right, let's move on to the next level. This bomb is going to look hard, but you should be able to figure it out. And it's written down here, start up top. That's good, but I still want to check out the detonate path. So... If I turn on this switch, I'll satisfy the AND here. Current will flow through this rotary switch, and boom. But if I turn the switch like so, and turn on this switch, current will flow through this, this point here, and then through here and here, and blow us up anyway. So... I don't think we are depending on this wire and this pathway for anything, so we should probably cut this wire. Alright. Now let's take a look up top. 
If we turn switch one, we'll half satisfy this and. There's no harm in doing that. Now, if we want to hit the A disarm, let's trace this pathway. We have this wire here, and we have this. Now, I can turn a switch like this, and we've disarmed A. We still need to disarm B, but we can still make this work because we can make use of this wire here. So let's try that. Okay, now, is there a way that we can get C to work? Yes, we can, because we can put our rotary switch down here, going through this pathway, back to switch 3. Now, current will flow through this AND gate, but it will be blocked because the rotary switch is turned against it, which means the detonator will not turn off. So, here we go. Great, see if you take things one step at a time, you can solve complicated circuits. Okay, good luck on this section's final circuit. It is particularly tricky. And there's a hint here that says split the current. So we're going to want to make use of these current splitting branches here and here. We also have to make sure not to detonate the bomb. Now we already have a pathway going where C is already disarmed. But we may have to change that. Okay, so let's look at this. We've got the detonate path here. We don't necessarily need current flowing this far. But we do need current flowing through here. We don't want to mess with that. But there may be a way where we can have current flowing through this point to activate C. But we also need current flowing through this wire to hit the disarm A. So let's try that now. So let's put current through here. Okay, that's good because we still have C working for us and we've half satisfied the AND gate for B. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. So if I turn this switch, we'll have current flowing through here, and here, and here in both directions. And if I turn this switch, current will be flowing through here to A, it, this AND gate will be satisfied, and we'll be able to hit the B disarm as well. So let's do that now. Well done! You have completed the first section on Digital Logic. Well, that's great. So there's the completion of another level of Bomb Squad Academy. Thank you very much for watching, and join me for the next chapter.